Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. It is a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I hold, my name is Nikita Sulikov. I hold a bachelor's and a master's degree in philosophy from Moscow State University. Now I do uh, my research independently. I'm preparing for a PhD in game studies uh, during my gap year. And today I'm going uh, to talk about the totalitarian twist in Russian politics with some examples from uh, the game industry and culture. A brief description of some notable cases in the Russian game industry seems appropriate to approach the issue. It may be particularly compelling for the game researchers community considering that games can be suitable to examine uh, oppressive mechanisms. And it may be remarkable to describe the totalitarian uh, shift in order to be aware of its symptoms. It is decidedly important due to the recent reinforcement of right-wing um, radicals in uh, liberal democracies. It is common for the authoritarian states to depoliticize their citizens and to make people less involved, uh, interested in political and social changes. For many years, that was the model of Putin's regime in Russia. Excuse me. Uh, uh, there is a problem with my presentation, I think. Let me, maybe. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, I figured it out. Sorry, sorry for this. Sorry. For the last 20 years, the country has seg uh, had significant economic growth and a weak institute of democracy. And as institutes of democracy were ineffective, people did not engage in the state's politics. Many refused to vote or protest. At the same time, people were falling under the Russian government's propaganda which has gained more power over time. In comparison with an authoritarian state, a totalitarian one actively involves uh, citizens in the political life of the country through ideology. Nowadays, the Russian propaganda media have established an unprecedented level of power. However, until recent times, computer games have not been used for this purpose. I want to show that nowadays Putin's government begins to instrumentalize computer games to be one more militaristic and oppressive propaganda medium. This is going to be a descriptive analysis of four cases. I will not present the conception, yet I rely upon a particular uh, conceptualization of uh, totalitarianism. The idea uh, that a totalitarian state involves people in politics through an ideology can be found in the works of Hannah Arendt, uh, George Lukacs, and Victor Klemperers. Uh, but, uh, but I find more impressive to approach uh, the uh, question of totalitarianism from the perspective of Emmanuel Levinas's Totality and Infinity. In this book, uh, Levinas says that the totality is the war because in the war there is no place for the other. Here, the other is conceptualized as something different or alternative to the order of things which the totality of war offers. The other helps to transcend from the totality to the infinity. From the perspective uh, of infinity, everything has uh, an end. Even war or tot totalitarianism uh, does uh, have end, and in the end, there is peace. The framework will be especially uh, relevant to the last case in this presentation, as it will be about queerness and its acknowledged otherness. I'm starting uh, with the vaguest case, which is about the national game engine. Mm. Sorry. A discussion about the Russian game engine started this year in May. It was uh, three months uh, after Russia invaded Ukraine. Epic Games stopped commerce in Russia in March. And since then, it is impossible to do financial operations with Russian payment methods in Unity 2. Some were afraid that Unity and Epic would completely abandon the country. And uh, therefore, the Russian presidential administration held a meeting with game developers and uh, discussed national substitution. 
It seems to be part of the input substitution trend, uh, which has emerged uh, in all industrial spheres since the economic sanctions against Russia were announced. Many saw uh, this as a potential for national business. However, in August, uh, the Russian Ministry of Digital Development refused to allocate money for the development of the project, of the game engine project. Some said that uh, the angel will cost up to 48 million euros. Uh, recently, there was news that an anonymous private investor wished to put this money, uh, his money, to the engine. Uh, and then we will see because there were no uh, news about it since then. Although the proposed project was rejected, the case indicates the state's interest in specific advantages of games and play. The next case, which uh, which I do, which I describe will describe uh, will show more precisely that the Russian government wishes to use computer games as propaganda media. Um, this year, June, a game called Smuta was announced at Saint Petersburg's Forum. The forum was organized with the participation of the Institute of Internet Development. Notably, the Russian presidential administration established this institute. Smuta is an action RPG with a historical setting in the 17th uh, century. At this time, Lithuania and Poland intervened in Russia. The game Smuta takes place during the Polish-Russian War in um, 1620. Uh, and this war, Polish-Russian war, followed the intervention of Lithuania and Poland. And in the context of the war in Ukraine and European sanctions against Russia, it seems obvious to me that the government wants to support the Smuta project in order to make computer games another medium for anti-Western propaganda. One can also consider the project as a part of the input substitution trend. The game company Siberia Limited which developed Smuta, received a 4 million euro grant for, from the Institute of Internet Development. It asked from the presidential administration. Then there, there was a scandal because uh, companies shut down, uh, companies' site uh, shut down right after the, uh, it received uh, the grant. But uh, the developers seemed to rehabilitate it themselves as they launched a new site with the press pack of more recent game content. For instance, this is some renewed uh, character design. The release will be at the end of uh, 2023 20, year, and then we will see if it is fake or not. Later this year, in September, a number of other curious projects were announced by the Institute of Internet Development. For instance, one of them has a setting in the year 1812, when France invaded Russia during the Napoleonic Wars. Sparta is the project which has caught the most attention. It is a tactical RPG about contractors from a private military group. Unfortunately, no new content was announced about those games, so I don't have to show you any screenshots right now in the presentation. Uh, for the Sparta, there was one and a half million euros um, allocated for the development. One of the sources from the presidential administration says that the government has become interested in those recent projects because they create a positive view of Russian soldiers. Notwithstanding, the Institute of Internet Development said that they do not wish to popularize private military contracting. My next case will demonstrate that the Russian government uh, actually does popularize construction, and it does it by using game cultural content. Um, <clears throat> on the current slide, you can see a screenshot from a promotion of a Russian private military company called Wagner. Uh, such companies, private military companies, are forbidden in Russia, but unofficially, uh, this one is uh, under Putin's control, as it belongs to his associate, Evgeny Prigozhin. And on this slide, you can see a screenshot uh, uh, from the promotion of this uh, Wagner group. 
It convinces, the promotion convinces fans of synthwave aesthetics to join. And in essence, uh, this means to join the war in Ukraine. Synthwave is admittedly associated with computer game culture. And there is also an early example of game cultural content being used as an oppressive mechanism. mechanism. Uh, this is a musical trap video with Russian soldiers in Ukraine. Their faces are hidden behind masks from the Hotline Miami video game. Uh, this game is quite popular in Russia and has certainly influenced uh, synthwave aesthetics movement. Uh, so here, the masks which were used in the Russian trap video. Um, the video where they use those masks uh, is created by a community called Essence Military. It posts many other war supporting materials or synthwave and uh, with synthwave and uh, video game aesthetics. These people uh, seem to be enthusiasts. They're kind of war fans, fans with 30,000 subscribers, which is not really a big number for the contacted social network uh, that they use. I do not know if they have any financial support uh, from the government, but uh, they probably could have had one. In previous cases, the Russian government and military enthusiasts uh, used game cultural content and game specific advantages for hate speech, war and anti-Western propaganda. In other words, they had instrumentalized games to oppress the player community. In the last case that I will show, uh, we will see another example of the government's suppression of players and uh, player community minorities. Also, it will be an example of game culture uh, censorship. Every game presented on this slide is going to be banned in Russia due to a new homophobic law against LGBT propaganda. The law was passed the day before yesterday. And as it seems to me, the list presented on the slide will be complemented with new titles. As an example, you don't see mass effect here. Uh, a homophobic campaign started in Russia in uh, 2013. Yeah. Then there was a law against, as they have called it, the propaganda of non-traditional relations, uh, but among the underage. The new homophobic law uh, covers all ages. One can be fined six and a half thousand euros just for telling his friend about queer people. The law has unclear wording, uh, as it is not clear what propaganda means. Therefore, the government can repress whoever it wants to. The queer matter is at the forefront of the Russian totalitarian tendency. Admittedly, the rights of minorities are at a, a litmus test uh, of human rights in any society because minority rights protection is a guarantee of all personal rights protection. The queer case is especially important if we address Levinas's totality of war concept. There is no place for the other in a totalitarian and militaristic society. To argue, one speaker in the Russian state Duma compared the homophobic law with the victory on a battlefield. In this way, the government erases the other, the queers, from video game culture by censoring its content. And then it tries to fulfill the gap with propaganda materials such as the anti-Western Smuta or the militaristic Sparta and uh, private military group promotions. Obviously, uh, the law was passed uh, to withdraw people's attention from a defeat in the war. The government wants to raise a moral panic. At the same time, the law dehumanizes queers the same way the Ukrainians were dehumanized by the Russian state propaganda during the war. All these demonic manifestations contradict our traditional values. Anything that demonstrates it should be illegal. We must protect our society, said State Duma speaker Alek Nilov about queers. To conclude, I can say that there is a totalitarian twist in Russian game culture. The government seems to be interested in the potential of games and play for oppression, as with the National Game Engine project. It can use computer games as a medium for anti-Western and militaristic propaganda, as with smooth and Sparta game projects. 
It already uses some game cultural content as an oppressive mechanism to gain ideological power over the community of Russian players, as with Wagner promotion. And the government censors game content and oppresses the community of players and its minorities, as with the homophobic law. Um, I suppose the totalitarian tendency will probably endure. For, in, for instance, uh, there was no news about censorship at the time I was submitting this talk. Also, um, the day before yesterday, there was shocking news about uh, live action role players who played Stalker in a Ukrainian uh, game. And they were killed by Russia's uh, Russian Federal Security Service because the players had Ukrainian uniforms, they were role playing, and they also had maps and other uh, Ukrainian attributes uh, from the game setting. Moreover, we may extrapolate the totalitarian tendency from the game culture to Russian culture in general. For instance, the homophobic law also affects literature, cinema, and other cultural media. Uh, that's it. I would like to thank my uh, friend and colleague, Alexey Pavperov. He is a journalist uh, who helped me uh, find some relevant materials for this talk. And I would like to thank you. Uh, I'm really grateful for your attention and for your time. I appreciate this opportunity to give this talk. And I am ready for your questions.